Okay, so I'm kind of like doing a late night work sesh because I'm not yet done with what I was supposed to do and I was like, you know what, let me shoot this video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I, I, I actually do my edits. It's actually 11.38pm. Yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so first things first, I have to make sure that I have everything in check. So the things that I actually use to edit, you can actually use your earphones, but I honestly got these headphones because I wanted to be able to be editing my content and I didn't want to disturb people who literally were watching news. And I also got this hard drive. Now, the importance of this hard drive is so that I can actually edit here. So all my footages are usually here and i edit through this because i always want to make sure i have a backup one and the second thing is because it's way easier to edit here than to edit on my laptop because my laptop remember i also program and that takes up a lot of um, ram power and editing is also whew, takes up a lot on your machine so get this honestly it's cheap and it's really great especially if you're a video editor to edit externally so i make sure i have this too and right now i feel like i'm rambling so let's jump into my laptop so that i can show you what i mean so first things first i have to make sure that i have the footage i also have to make sure that i have the overlays that i'm gonna place in my videos and i also have to make sure i have the sound as well as the outro because you guys have noticed i usually use the same outro every single time my video ends and that's because i customly built it on canva honestly guys i've been singing a lot about canva and i think you should get it first off i'm gonna start a screen recording here and i'm gonna show you how i usually create those subfolders because it's really important you set um you set up that particular workspace so that it makes it a bit easier for you to understand what you're gonna import on your on your what what you're gonna be importing on your machine not on your machine on premiere pro because i usually use adobe premiere pro to edit all my youtube videos you can see that i have the folder that i'm actually going to be editing it's how to become a better content creator not guys i'm editing this video because it's supposed to go live tomorrow no the day after tomorrow so i need to make sure that i have rec i have at least edited it because i filmed it i think today was a filming sesh okay i'm not really sure the number of videos i actually filmed today but i did film this particular video and i also filmed for my instagram and my tiktok so now this is the video that i'm gonna be editing and of course i have to set it up now you guys can see that when i open this everything you're seeing here is footage and this is camera footage so this is the footage that i've actually created for the this is the footage that i've actually created when i shot my videos today so now i have to create the subfolders and i usually have four main subfolders so i have a, a subfolder for the footages that i've actually recorded which i'm gonna be renaming you guys are gonna see that um and then i also have a subfolder for b-roll footage and i also have a subfolder for music and sound effects and i will also have a subfolder for overlays so you can see i have all these subfolders so the thing i'm gonna do is because some of the footage here is actually b-roll footage so the b-roll footage i'm just gonna move them to b-roll and then the other footages which is all these other videos i'm gonna move them to then the legit place they're supposed to be in so i'm just gonna do this real quickly now something that i actually do before i actually start editing is i also prepare my overlays beforehand now i know in this particular video i'm gonna be using overlays and i'm also gonna be using motion graphics or motion text so there's not really a lot of overlays that i'm gonna be putting in this particular video so now if i look at, if i go back to my downloads you guys can see i already have the overlays now these overlays i actually create them on jitter.video and i did a whole entire video talking about the things you need as a content creator if you haven't watched that i'm gonna include it right here for you guys to go and actually check it out honestly i don't know if it's gonna be here or here <laughs> honestly i don't know but 
I will include it above and you can go and check that video out to see the website. Now, these are the these are the overlays that I'm going to be using in this particular video that I'm going to be editing. So I'm just going to move them. Um, I really don't, I did, I did download them and here we are. They're going to go into the overlays footage. Now, if you guys are wondering where I get my music from, I honestly have a subfolder where I stored all the sound effects that I usually use in my videos. And so I'm just going to go back to my disc. You guys can see that I have my SFX here. And I'm going to copy because I need this. I click, do I need a click sound? I don't know. But I'm just going to copy the ones that are necessary so i'm just gonna copy these move back to my folder and i'm gonna put the music there now here on my on my adobe premiere pro if you don't know how to import honestly the steps are so easy you just come over here to file and then it will give you a drop down and you'll see here import so when you click import it's gonna bring you to where you want to import content from and you can see here i'm importing from this particular folder i've imported footage and that is why you can see all this footage that is around over here now the most important thing that i want you to know is actually the cuts now you can see here that i have my clip already um set into the sequence so the first thing i want you guys to see is all this dead dead space now the first thing that i usually do is to remove the dead space and for the first part of it i can just do it like that and then i bring the clip back closer and i can see myself in frame so that is how i usually remove dead space another trick that i usually use is to actually cut out there's a razor tool there so i just pick it up and you can see there's some dead space towards the end of this uh, particular clip so i just put clip there and then i come here and i press backspace that's the easiest way that's the easiest way i think i get to actually um cut out my content and also Control S every single time you make a change because Adobe Premiere Pro, especially when you're running it on your laptop, most of the time it crashes. So I was just editing and then I remembered that there's something I failed to show you. So now if you're wondering how I actually move these clips into the sequence, this is what I do. So you can see here I have a number of clips. I've, I've already edited to clip four. So I'm not going to import clip five into my sequence so that I can edit that. Now this is what you do. You just drag the clip to your sequence and once you have actually dragged it you can see it's now appearing right after clip four so guys i'm not even gonna lie yesterday i fell asleep and i was doing a late night work sesh but anyway i fell asleep let's get back to it now the second thing i usually do to my videos is color correcting now if you don't have an idea of how to color correct your videos it's really really important because it synchronizes the colors that are present in your video so basically this is what i do on premiere pro i just add an adjustment layer that's really important because it helps me synchronize all the changes across the clips so i just like using the adjustment layer you can see i've added the adjustment layer here and then the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna just add it to the sequence so we're gonna put it on top of the video and then the next thing we're gonna do is to actually color correct now in order for us to do that on premiere pro you have to go to lumetri color as you guys can see this is everything that appears but the first thing is to do skin tone color correction and this is how i do it Honestly, I feel like this is the best way for me to do color correction for my skin tone because it captures literally everything that is going on with my skin and I can be able to adjust how I appear. Now, you guys will see that when I'm using this particular um when I'm using this particular format, you can see that any change I apply on my skin tone is actually concurrent every single place now even if my hands will appear in this particular video you'll see it's using it's actually looking the same the color is the same as the one that i implemented when i was doing color correction and that is why i like using um the lumetri color scope for secondary hsl and then the other thing is to do basic correction now you guys can see that i am i am really trying to 
put the adjustment onto that clip now in order for me to make sure that these colors that i'm implementing in my color correction are appearing on every other clip that's where the adjustment layer comes in because with the adjustment layer at this particular point in time i'm now going to make sure that i add the settings that i have created or the settings that i have implemented in the first clip to the adjustment layer now this is what is gonna happen and um, you can see that i'm actually transferring the I'm actually transferring the settings to the adjustment layer so that it's synonymous across all the clips. And basically, once I'm done doing that, I am going to drag out the adjustment layer on every other clip that I have on this particular sequence because I want the colors to be applied synchronously across all the clips okay so the next thing that i actually do is to add on my overlays as well as my b-roll footage so this is what i actually do now i'm just gonna locate my folder right over here and for the footage i'm just gonna rename them to what i actually want to show now here i have my ring lights b-roll footage so i'm just gonna rename it to ring lights so that I know where to place it. And then the other one is tripod, if I'm not wrong. So I'm just going to name this tripod. Because I did speak about a point on equipment evolution. And I need to make sure that I actually have the B-roll in place, right? And then the overlays. I think I have all the overlays I need. Do I really? Yeah, I have all the overlays I need, but there's something missing. So I'm just going to come here to mobile videography. I think I have the overlay there and I'm going to look for it because it's supposed to be here somewhere. Here it is, template. So I'm just going to copy it again and I'm going to bring it to my overlays okay guys due to some unavoidable circumstances i've seen that this video is going on for way longer than it should so i've chosen to stop at color correction or was it adding overlays i'm not really sure as i was editing and i will have a part two on how i actually do the other things that i haven't mentioned in this particular video but so far so good i hope i've been able to help you to the point where you can be able to just use adobe premiere pro in a let me say in a way that is user or beginner friendly for you but otherwise that is it thank you so much for watching until the end of this tutorial i know it's a long one and honestly guys i'm back and i will be seeing you next week with another video of course i have a lot of information to tell you guys and i'm pretty sure it's gonna be really helpful so until then guys thank you so much for watching if you feel like sticking around I do recommend checking the video about the new editing style for YouTube, which I'm going to include it right here. And I hope I will get to see you in that particular video.